Hello everyone, my name is David Arroyo and in this video we're going to talk about how to draw in perspective and why. I think the why is actually very important because it actually gives you purpose. See, a lot of videos that I've seen on YouTube, they all talk about perspective and about how to draw perspective, the one point, the two point, the three point, all that stuff, that's great. But I think that, um, you know, a lot of students out there, uh, and, I, and I see that in my own class as well, they find perspective not so interesting because it's quite bland. It's just, you know, constructive lines uh, in order to help you progress and to create your drawing and all that type of stuff. But there is so much more to perspective than just drawing a few stupid lines. That is why I want to address the why first. Why do you need perspective? Why would you use it in what type of scenarios? So that's what we're going to look at first. And then in the second part of the video, uh, I'll show you how to construct some basic perspective uh, grids and also try to provide you some exercises uh, to try out at home that you can uh, give a go and, you know, to practice your perspective, basically. So, okay, enough of me talking. Let's get started. Okay, so the thing that people tend to think about when they hear about perspective is always buildings and different type of environments or you know they always think in terms of like uh, a street or you know um, take for example if you go on google and you do or run a search on perspective drawing the very first thing you're going to see are the one point, the two point and three point perspective drawings and the examples that they provide, but they're always the same. Kind of like what you're seeing right here. The ones that I'm drawing right now really quickly, this is kind of like what you're seeing. So the top one being a two point, uh, one point perspective, the very first one, then a two point and the one at the bottom being a three point. Now, what I'm trying to say uh, is that perspective drawing is much more than just environments like what you're seeing here. Perspective drawing is also applied to items, to people, to basically anything that you'll see. So an example is, if you look at these two, they're excavators, uh, you'll see that they also exist within a 3D space. And they are also consistent of 3D blocks. Okay, so you can always break them down into 3D shapes that you can then later work with. So this is a good exercise to do. So in a uh, app like Procreate, you can quickly trace over it. And then once you've got the actual tracing, uh, it's a good idea to remove the picture and then try to reconstruct the excavators just from either looking at a reference picture or something similar. Now, a similar example is uh, this F-35 fighter jet. Uh, so you can add perspective lines. You don't have to create the entire uh, vanishing point grid and all that stuff. No, but just you can clearly see by the picture how the lines are shaped or, you know, more or less you can guess the perspective. Once you've got that down, you can take away the picture, draw over it. I mean, draw draw the lines as you see them, then put the picture there again, and then, you know, see how accurate you drew it. Okay, you, you might make some mistakes here and there, but it's a good exercise just as a beginning exercise. You know, and then once you got that, get rid of the picture and, you know, just do your own thing. You want to add colors to it, make the picture smaller, put it in the corner. You know, you can then either give yourself a second challenge, like I'm going to color pick, which is quite easy, or you're going to try to, you know, understand how the colors are made, and then you end up with something similar to what you're looking at uh, right now. Now, another example right here is are the ants uh, in 3D. Now, this is uh, a step further. So once you have a bit of a better understanding on perspective, what you might want to do is give these, um, you know, something like an ant or a teddy bear or, you know, a horse or whatever. You just choose something that you want to draw in perspective, but from a completely different angle than the image that you have as a reference. So I will be doing two different angles on the ant right here. So the very first one is a camera shot from the top, and then another one is one from the bottom to create a completely different shot. Um, and this you can do, you know, this will take you obviously a little bit more time uh, to search and find, you know, your shapes. Uh, the better your reference material, the easier it will be. So for me, the ants were actually quite small, so the details were quite hard to see. 
Um, but, you know, I still worked with it. And then I looked up some more reference images uh, online just to compare later on. That's why you'll see me modifying a few things towards the end. But this is also a very, very good exercise to practice your perspective. You're not drawing buildings, obviously. You're not drawing one point, two point or three point perspective per se, but your underlying um, construction, that is perspective. That is all within a grid that you created, that you had to choose. You had to choose the camera angle. You had to choose, um, you know, the, the, the depth, the, you know, whether it was going to be a wide lens or uh, not a wide lens, whether, you know, all these things you had to choose. And in order to choose these things, you needed an understanding of perspective. So as you can see here, I'm just drawing in some extra lines just to show you uh, the perspective in which it was drawn. And uh, there you go. So that's another very interesting exercise. Now, I want to take you to um, Sketchbook Pro to show you quickly how to create some perspective uh, grids yourself. So in Sketchbook Pro, the selections that I'm making here, these are the perspective grids that you can use. They're basically like um, magnets that you can, um, you know, activate, if you will. Uh, if you choose, for example, like I have done here, a one point perspective, all the lines that you're going to start drawing, they're all going to go towards the vanishing point. There's only one vanishing point. That's the one that you see there uh, with the blue horizon line. So that is how that works. And now for the two point perspective, it's practically the same. So you've got your two vanishing points to which your lines will always be drawn to. So it's extremely useful uh, to do this like this instead of having to use any rulers and you know calculate the perspective yourself. You don't even have to draw the lines all the way towards the uh, vanishing points. It just snaps into the uh, direction in which it has to go. Now the three point perspective, which is what I'm showing right now, that one works identically the same way. Now here the vanishing points are not even within the screen anymore. So I've set them up uh, realistically um, to be far away from the canvas uh, as would happen with a real uh, life lens. So in a real lens, uh, you know, with a real camera lens, the vanishing points are actually quite far away from the canvas. If the vanishing points are close, then that means uh, that the lens is a wide lens or an extreme wide lens. This is very important to remember. So the closer your vanishing points are, the um, you know the the wider your lens basically, and the more uh, deformed uh, you're going to get it. Now talking about deformed lenses, here is a um, you know fisheye lens, uh, which is your uh, you know this extra feature that Sketchbook Pro has. And it's really cool because it creates this really fun little deformed, um, you know, perspective grid basically, or, you know, view. So to recap, this is your three point perspective, uh, the two point perspective, which is very useful for items and, and objects and the one point perspective for depth and all that type of stuff. Uh, so that's how, how perspective works within Sketchbook Pro. Then Photoshop, that's a different ballgame. Photoshop does not have a perspective uh, system. Well, it kind of does, but not necessarily for drawing. So not like the ones that we saw. What we're going to do here is we're going to modify a polygon tool into a star like I just did. And then we're going to uh, indent the size by 99%. And also the sides, instead of six, we're going to turn them into 100. This is going to create a star, actually, but with 100, um, you know, sides coming out of it and with an indent of 99%. This ends up looking like a vanishing point, as you're seeing here, and you can move it around uh, and, you know, do anything you want with it. Now, this is quite useful because you can put in two vanishing points, as you're seeing here, and when you move them around, it kind of looks like a camera, you know, like a 3D camera with a with a grid. Very useful uh, to use as reference for uh, when you're going to do perspective drawings in Photoshop. And the same, you can add a third vanishing point. And again, when you move them around, it kind of really looks like a 3D camera. So 
what happens in Photoshop, again, like I said, there is no uh, drawing tool that will just follow the line. So you just draw, um, you know, your lines based on, you know, your shift. Uh, if you hold on shift and you click anywhere, it will just draw straight lines. So you can just create the lines, um, you know, into perspective and or, or distort them as I did with the wheel right there. Okay, so the very last one that I want to show is done in Procreate. So Procreate actually is quite simple. Uh, you just go to the drawing guide, select the edit drawing guide, and here you can choose between 2D grid, isometric, perspective, uh, symmetry. Now, the perspective one is the one that you're interested in, and for that you can just make the canvas smaller to add a vanishing point, you just tap on it, and then you can move it around wherever you want. So this is a one point perspective, move it to the side. You can tap on the other side. You've got a two point perspective now with a grid and tap the third one and you've got yourself a third uh, three point perspective. Now this one I strongly recommend to put it down as far as you can. So something like this for realistic effects. Also your vanishing points a little bit further away from your canvas. Um, oops, once you got that, you press done over here and you got yourself now a perfectly working uh, canvas. So you just go to your layers, okay, so you open your layer, you can select the layer and make sure that drawing assist is on. And now if I'm going to draw every line that I'm going to draw, let me select a better brush like inking for example a technical pen make it a little bit thicker so it's clearly visible but from here on out I can draw anything in perspective uh, that I want so it should work perfectly fine uh, let me take some distance here and it perfectly follows all the lines for me Procreate is by far the easiest one to use and the most user-friendly. It is really lovely. I'm very, very happy with it. It's extremely fast as well. So uh, much faster than um, Sketchbook Pro or any of the other ones. Uh, but that's how perspective works uh, here. You can always edit the, um, the guide or you can always turn it off by just going to Drawing Assist. So you turn it off and then you can draw normal again uh, if you want it back. In my case, uh, I just select there and then it's back on Drawing Assist. So there you go, that's in Procreate. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is my video on how to draw in perspective and why. Uh, I hope that the video was insightful, that the information uh, motivates you a little bit, and also that it makes perspective a little bit more fun to think about, to look at, not just simple lines and you're like, yeah, I can do my one point, two point, and three point perspective, but you actually understand how to apply it in everyday life, every type of drawings that you're gonna do, whether are they are buildings, animals, uh, props, vehicles, you know, um, so there you go. If you like this type of content, as usual, leave a like and subscribe. And of course, before I forget, if you have any further questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I do read and reply as much as I can. Thank you very much for stopping by everyone. And I guess I'll see you in the next one.